The Chief Justice nominee took his seat to face the Appointments Committee of Parliament after the uncertainty surrounding the participation of the minority in the process was cleared. Justice Eni Abua was quick to clear allegations against him concerning declaration of his assets as a judge of the Superior Court. Went to the Supreme Court. The Chief Justice insisted and we complied. And I have also uh, sub sub submitted one to the uh, Auditor General. On the controversial issue of legal education, these were his thoughts. Indeed, uh, before I even became a member of the General Legal Council, the General Legal Council mandated um, me to lead a team comprising the, uh, the Bar Association President, uh, one Mr. Kofi Abochi, who has taught law for about 20 years, and uh, somebody from NAB and other to just assess the faculties from where we will pick them to do the professional law course. Because the foundation for legal, uh, professional law course is laid at the faculties. And an uh, honorable member, we have compiled our records. And if you claim me, I will publish, I will cause to be published the results that we found the result that we found, and it is horrific. And for the first time, I've been a lawyer for 38 years now. For the first time in the history of legal education, you will see a law faculty headed by an acting dean who has never read law. And it is in Ghana. All over the world, this is happening in Ghana. You see, so it is very dangerous. You go to the library and you will see that, well, in the whole of Ghana, you have only one law librarian. But you go to the library, and at the faculty level, you see more professional law books than the, the basic ones like Smith and Hogan, uh, Street on Thoughts, and whatever. We went to a, a visit a, a, a university library, and there were 10 of Mr. Kwame Tete's books. Honorable, you, you, you agree with me. What does the LLB student need? For the civil procedure. For civil procedure. It, it doesn't happen anywhere in the world, but it is happening in Ghana here. Justin Eboa was confronted with the question of judicial corruption. While not dismissing the phenomenon, he indicated public support was needed to completely end it. I've been at the bar for 38 years. I can make some several examples to satisfy you, but we will not certainly spare anybody who is caught with evidence. But Ghanaians must also be bold and prepared to come and I mean, prove some allegations. The fact that somebody is a judicial officer Thank you, doesn't mean that you can Thank always you. level damning allegations of impropriety without time, substance. So. Honorable members, so uh, Mr. Chairman, please, if at Christmas and you come and give me a hamper, the hamper can be more than about, say, 500 Ghana cities. Please, let's face realities. We are Ghanaians. Would that amount to maybe influencing me so that when you have a case there, I will certainly bend the rules. No, please, we, we are Ghanaians first. Yes, so please, let, when we are advocating for this, we, we must call for a national dialogue to, to arrive at a consensus. He was also asked questions about relations between himself and his ex-wife, now Supreme Court Justice Avril Lovelace Johnson, and if that would affect their work on the bench. Mr. Chairman, uh, with due respect, no. Yes, we are professionals. Yes. So, uh, members of the appointments committee are locked up in committee room two, um, taking a decision on whether uh, the Chief Justice nominee, Justice Eniyebwa, should be recommended for approval or not. Of course, he's gone through some grueling, close to six hour um, vetting here at the hands of the appointments committee of parliament. His nomination is expected to be taken on the floor through the report to be submitted by the appointments committee later today in parliament before the house rises for the end of year festivities reporting from parliament my name is duke mansopoku for city news